tall order. We don't like no, white chicken salad. Know. The light's on, and when the light goes off, it's... Mm. Hey, Chris, I called with the order. Okay. You did? Yeah. Okay. Right now. Right now, but I don't have an agenda. Oh, yeah. I looked at it when I put it away. Okay. 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 Adoption of agenda. That council adopt the agenda as presented. Can I get a seconder? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Number three, adoption of minutes, none. Number four, new business recommendation. The council received the capital and special projects list for approval. Can I get a second? Second. For the rain. <laughs> Just so we wouldn't be welcome to second. Any discussion? Oh. <laughs> Marlene, sorry. Any discussion? <laughs> Mom, yes? Yeah. Mm. Do you want him to go through it with us again before we... Uh, no. I'm thinking we need a discussion for him to go through it. Okay. Happy to do your worship. Thank you. So in the, <laughs> in the agenda package, <laughs> you guys, I got two copies of the, uh, the, the, the list. So the first one, and it's just uh, highlighted it up top, uh, second draft. And then the other one is the list that was presented the other night. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the screen is the new version of it. So essentially, we uh, put a lot of that stuff that council had requested, but all of it from the, the previous meeting. And the end result is to bring us down to those two numbers. So 815,000 in the total of 19 uh, projects on the list. So is that compatible to, or payable to be able to do 19? I believe so, Your Worship. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't so. want to fail at that, right? No, I agree, and we're not uh, we're not looking to set ourselves up to fail here either this year. Um, the pre-approval stuff, uh, I am anxious to get working on on some of that. So, what about the upgrades of sewer line? Why is it um, taken out? That was removed at council's request, and uh, the request. Because we're doing the scoping. Uh, no, the request there was to start moving 100,000 a year into reserves as opposed to putting it directly into the capital project here. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I remember that now. After you told me then. I think this is a solid plan for uh, for 2018. Or yeah. 2019. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> We're going back. So, <laughs> so, 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 Sandy will call um, somebody for the museum exterior repairs. Sandy's going to be calling um, and getting quotes for those. Hmm? Thank you, I Sandy. am? Awesome. For I can... the museum exterior? Yeah. Because nice. there's things that are broken on there. And we need quotes before. Well, Les needs to let us know what's broken. Yeah. yeah, but we should actually have contractors just go in there, look at the exterior of that building and say, well, this needs to be replaced, this needs to be replaced, get three different quotes, because then we can go, oh, the whole thing, because that's what's going to happen. Oh, I see where you're going. Because three just, different well, people are going to try out three different things, right? Yeah. Okay. Would you just not put that out to the public? Is it anyone interested? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it would be an RFP. Well, no, but there. We could, uh, so that, that line, line 29, um, two things about line 29 there. The reason we landed on 25,000 is I looked into our reserve fund balances and we have 25,000 sitting in the museum repairs capital reserve account right now. Right. I did speak to Les about it and mentioned to him that I was looking at moving the full 25,000 into the capital budget. He felt that was okay. He has a painting quote right now for somebody to do painting. Minor side here, yeah, one quote, but that was just to get us, you know, to a point where we had an idea of what we were what we were looking at. So that was seventeen grand. So we need two, two or three quotes. I don't just want one. Quote. Yeah, the policy is to because then we know, them. right? We know exactly all the different contractors have looked at this building. Then we know exactly what's wrong. Council's aware of what's what's wrong with it, and then we can work towards fixing it properly. Yeah. Right? When you talk painting, you're not talking the exterior, right? It, yeah, it is exterior yeah. painting. You just had it done. No, not painting. Yes. Mm -hmm. The exterior of the building was painted 
when the roof was done. Yeah. I think this is the windows, Sabby. The windows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that they had to get somebody to. But see, Sabby. Yes. No. no. Trina and I had to talk about it. We have the bill. There, there may have been portions of it that got painted while they were doing it, but the, the bulk of the exterior hasn't been painted. Then we should go back to the bill because it quotes that the whole thing was done. Well, half the east drops are missing early. Yeah. No, that's the repair. Soffits, yeah. Soffits, yeah. Soffits, yeah. Soffits, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that quote that Les got was to have that little bit of stuff repaired as the painters were, were going around it. So, okay. the, yeah, sills, soffits. Part. When we get the museum painted, do you think we can get some extra paint on that community, healthy community signs outside the post office? I know it, it's just going to take a couple of little extra paint things, or maybe public works. Are you could, talking about the bulletin board? Mm -hmm. Yes. We get public works to do yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I was looking at that the other day, and yeah. I'm thinking, it needs a little touch-up. Can touch you make up. a note of that? Oh, we'll get yeah. the summer students to do that this year. We don't need but, to um, get a plan. Did you guys not think that we should have more than one quote? Yes. And then we know what's it needs to be done. Absolutely. You know, if you have three different con uh, contractors looking at it, you yeah, the and they have three easy. different things. Mm -hmm. right? So we could we could leave this project in then as is, and then I can uh, work with Les to get a couple of contractors in there to give us an overall opinion of the building. Yeah, because we're not paying until council decides. Yeah. The council needs to decide who the contractor is. Let's say you're going to take somebody out of the coffee shop and decide that. <laughs> we want to know, we want to know as council what we are paying for lock, stock, and barrel. Right? Yeah. And the business license. The business license. And I've already if he has liability that. insurance, yeah. everything. Good right. for you. Right down to the point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we, we came into that last year. We obtained a quote significantly cheaper than this, and it was somebody doing it out of the back of their pickup truck and said, We can't have that person paint the village property. No. It's got to be somebody fully WCB insured and liability insured. Yeah, so that, that mm -hmm. number is is a fully you know business ready contractor with a business license. Good for you. Okay. Yeah. As long as we get three, please, Chris. Just one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything that way. Um, so just to recap, folks, the, the pre-approvals then are the, the skate park. Um, the ones darkened. The streets and lanes. Yeah. The asset management plan. The boundary extension. The sidewalks. And the lagoon flow meter. Mm -hmm. And now the asset management um, finalization plan. There is grants out there for us to apply for with the asset management. So, so that's for, very important. For that particular one in here, we're already receiving a grant to cover that study. Yeah. So if we choose to implement anything later on down the road from the asset management plan, we can look at applying for, for grants for this project. Yeah. 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 And the skate park, you guys will notice that 325 is less than the sum of the three previous numbers that were in there. Um, and that was through part of the discussion with Urban Systems. We feel there can be a little bit of financial efficiency to get it all done at the same time there too. So it's a ballpark. We think that's reasonable to, uh, to finish it off, landscaping, lighting, everything. So yeah. the one cautionary note, like I put in the, um, in the other report about that is we, f we still feel we can get the rideable surface and most of it ready for that Canada Day deadline mark within you know, a week or so. Um, the park won't be fully complete by then, no. especially since we're talking planting trees and... Well, I don't want too many trees because they'll just get mm -hmm. destroyed over there. Well, we want to put a line along the, the fence in the back and actually now we're talking a line in the fence and then bring it out a few meters as well to kind of create an angular, you know, because even if we put the fence line there, it'll block the immediate view, but you can still see all the industrial stuff off into the, in the, you know, on an angle. So if we bring that out 10 meters or so, it'll shield most of the park from the look of the industrial stuff in the background. But what are they gonna hide behind that tree, those trees? That's my question. I wanna be able to see all four corners. <laughs> I mean, if I drive by, I wanna be able to see all four corners because in Dawson they have drug dealing issues. Oh yeah, right. Because it's it's out behind in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. 
So that won't that won't obscure the view of the park from the highway from the school. What that does is prevent people in the park from seeing into the industrial area. And what of course anybody sitting in one of the industrial sites couldn't see into the wouldn't park. Wouldn't it be just cheaper to buy the guy that those white slots? Put two cents. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to see slot. Hard to see slots instead of I can just see the trees getting destroyed. I mean look if you're in our park here. Yeah. Could you right? Could you put those concrete posts up too? Yeah. <laughs> Just because the trees will just get destroyed. Part of it was that, you know, if we're shooting for that beginning of July, we definitely don't want to start planting trees until, you know, later in the season because yeah. probably not going to survive. Guy just planting needs them in the middle of summer. Just but those, those trees aren't going to be cheap either because no. we're probably talking 10 foot mature trees in order to do what we want to do yeah. right off the bat. That's so that's they're going to be a few bucks. We do have grants that we can use. Though. Yeah, oh, that's true. The tree, tree grant. The tree How, grant. Many use that? Yeah. How much is a tree grant? Uh, I think it's up to 5000 So it's two trees? Better <laughs> <laughs> than no trees? It's $50 a tree. Here, which I <clears throat> yeah, you get a little one. You want something that's a little bigger so that they can't destroy them. I can't remember <laughs> the exact amount, but I have to think over it. We can still. You guys an idea what what do you think, mine? <laughs> oh, no trees, right? No expenses, no. How about it? Donna? What do you mean? Don't destroy them. Don't destroy them. Don't destroy them. Fire? I, like the trees. I like the trees. They need some shade. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do need much. a lot. We won't do much for shade. shade. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought a lot in that park. There's a lot in this park here yeah. that have been destroyed. Yeah. Well, I don't want to. If one or two, fine. But if you've got Oops. a whole windrow of them, they're going to destroy them. Okay. So the park, as we know, is going here. Um, with the mini ramp section being there, and then a slight angle to drain it into this natural little draw. The area of the trees that we're talking about was originally along this fence line. Because this, this is, you know, part rental. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in there, and it's not super visually appealing. <coughs> so what we were actually talking about was going here, and then also down here, maybe to there or so, so that people in the park couldn't see down to the rest of the <coughs> Because if we've got a picnic table here, let's say, somebody sitting there, if the trees stop, you are know, still seeing all of the rest of that stuff over there. So it's just playing with the angles. For the, for the trees to kind of block as much of the view into here for people using the park as, as possible. Um, this is already an eight, if not a nine foot chain link fence, but you can see right through it. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> but those privacy slats, you can put them through. Yeah, the privacy slats might be an option, you mm -hmm. Yeah, that would save a few bucks for sure. Yeah. I like what I put, yeah. put one or two home. trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my parents? Yeah, yeah. 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 will work. They go yeah, around. you can't kill those for nothing. Actually, it came with a backhoe. Oh, oh, long? Yeah. Yeah. oh, oh that, that fence is long because it, it's not only... I don't think this is Hart Oil Field either. The property sold, so it's somebody else that's in there now, but this is a, a continuous piece of fence that goes that's all the way down. Yeah. That's all Hart. <sighs> Do we, do we own the fence or do they A different they company fence? bought it, but it is all Hart. Hart bought that property. Oh, okay. So I don't think it's a property. Then they can't very well, unless they are okay with it. I think. Yeah, I, I think they'd be quite happy. If I wrote them a letter and said we wanted to put some slots in there, to, to, I don't think they would have an issue with that. To cover, we're not being a whole fence. Yeah. We'll do just on our right. side of the property. Okay, so let's, I'd suggest leaving the budget as is, folks, and those are discussions we can have as we go down the, go down the line. But uh, I'm pretty sure that gives us a number that we can, we can work with. I'm sorry, but I just see kids over the last 10 years destroy a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. um, council was talking lots about the uh, LED lights as well. I did have a conversation with Blair. He's kind of done an, an inventory, if you will, of, of the areas council requested we, we switch to LEDs. Turns out most of them are actually BC Hydro's lamp poles. So not in our purview to go and switch them up. We've got to write a letter to BC Hydro and request oh, that they do it. Oh, Bob. 
I'll pick up the phone. I'll get the bottom of that. And the way the way that works in town apparently is all the wooden posts are BC Hydros. All the steel ones are, and most yeah. of the ones in the downtown core. I want those are, wooden ones removed wooden and posts. put metal ones put in. That would be a letter to BC Hydro, Your Worship. That would be expensive. Yeah. Well, Bob's told us that you Sam to go ahead and write the letter. He made sure it went through. Mm -hmm. Remember we had that discussion? With him? Well, that's something that would have to come from, from council. We wouldn't have any weight coming from the administrations. Why do you want wood? No, I want the ugly wood. Well, those ugly wood ones are being their own leaning. They all look like they went and spent the night at the hard hotel. Well, I have the shelving stuck to poles in the wood. So just to confirm the process here, two guys were, were you know, the better part of three months away from adopting the full budget. What we're doing by adopting this portion of it is council is giving the green light to these projects as presented. Mm -hmm. The reason the ones are shaded for pre-approval is because we want to get going on those right away. And in fact, we are working on those right away. Mm -hmm. So by approving this to adopt it in the agenda, what I generally request is that that means, you know, for the final draft of the agenda, when we're at the 11th hour and we're into the three bylaw meetings, you guys don't come back to us and say, well, let's revisit the capital projects again and we'll knock a couple off. It's it's too late at that point. We're far too deep into the into the process. So, so the lagoon meter we actually have. Nope, we have to order that. But, um, we How have, do we know it's one hundred and fifteen thousand uh, dollars? I have a quote from Urban Systems for it. And who's uh, going to change it? Uh, we have to put that out to ten. We they've single sourced it. There's only a couple of companies that do that. Okay. Yeah, and we have we have two right there's one the discharge meter that's actually failed we're in the process of trying to change that and replace mm -hmm. it right now and then this one is to put the meter on the end so we can monitor flow in flow out and then so this is also getting ready for what we've discussed with leonard too like will this be something no it wasn't it wasn't this was a project conceived in 2015 and i'm Gonna be really honest with you. It was one of those projects from what I can tell is hey, there's a grant out there, we need to build one of these things. We've gone 60 years, you know. We don't actually have a requirement to monitor the flow coming in to the sewer. We do have a requirement to report the stuff going out. We were already underway by the time I got to the desk there had already been forty five thousand charged towards this project. The design was done. You know, we do have a grant for it, so we're covering ninety some odd thousand of this project from the grant. So the actual net cost of the village is pretty low. So can we use that meter <coughs> without talking out of turn here? Uh, use that meter and you guys all know what I'm talking about for that one area, right? You should be able to see what's going down to the sewer. Yeah, well, and that's so urban because council has adopted the West Coast plan. Urban urban feels now that this is you know still a beneficial project to the village because we can get an idea of what's going into the lagoons, and then tell us if our estimates of the lagoon capacity to be able to service West Coast makes sense. Or out of towners. Or out of towners, yeah, for you know something like a sandy dump or, or whatever might be down the road. But I mean, it's valuable information to have, I guess. But uh, you know, and we're so far down the down the rabbit hole on this that we might as well get it completed. Like okay. I say, there's there's ninety three thousand left in the in the grant, so the net cost to the village to have this done seems to make sense. If we don't do it this year, the the grant folks have told us we're not giving any more extensions. It's it's done, it's off the table, so might as well see it through to completion. So do you want us to just adopt it now? Uh, yeah, if council's okay with it, you guys have no more questions than a motion. Uh, yeah, just one question, sorry. <laughs> 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 Is there a motion to adopt it? Yeah, sure. With regards to the single sourcing of the installation, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's difficult to take in. Certain there must be other companies that could perform that task. When you have just one 
person, they can charge what they want. Like, for example, HF Nodes built the new raw water reservoir for Nelson Creek. There's flow meters to indicate what's going in, or flow meters to indicate what's going out. You know, is there a difference? Well, there's a plumbers, there's plumbers, all kinds of plumbers that would could, can install them it's if they're willing to. Right? There's the question. And in this project, this is completely outside of my area of expertise. I'm relying on water and systems is, is recommending to me as a reputable contractor to, to do this. So. so, but we don't have a cost for installation. We do. We yeah. have $115,000 set aside for the budget. Yeah. For the installation of in, this flow meter. Installation and the, and, and the purchase of the meter. So we're going to buy the meter directly. Urban Systems has arranged a contractor that can install that meter for us once we purchase it. Can uh, we maybe call around to see? How much is the flow meter? Uh, flow meter is about 8000 How much? 8000 I think we need some quotes, Chris. Yeah. Well, how come it's not I can't handle that, Your Worship. I would be calling a plumber and well, what are we installing? No idea. I'm an accountant. But we should have a report from Urban <laughs> Systems on it. So The we first can... thing they're going to ask me is specs, pipe size. What are we doing? I don't, mm -hmm. don't know. I haven't engineered this problem. But if we have. <laughs> you put eight yes. If we have the um, information from Urban Systems on what has to take place. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure we could contract. I could figure out from Dale who did Dawson Creeks. We could. I'd also say that the project cost will go up because then we'd be looking at issuing a tender document as well. So we're looking at five to ten thousand issues. Well, it would be cheaper. It could. That could be the net effect of it. Yeah. yeah. Possibly you not. said it's only eight thousand. Why do we need ninety-three? The unit itself on it is eight thousand. The installation is the difference. Well, that <laughs> much to put it in? The Look, I'll go take the course. <laughs> Look at Danny and Justin down there for ninety-three thousand dollars. <laughs> this is this is a municipal infrastructure project, folks. It's fully engineered. It's going to be built mm -hmm. to spec, and it's going to be built by a contractor that you know the premier engineering firm in the region recommends to do this. It can should, we find out from be done right. maybe Ken can find out from notes who actually installed? This is the meter of the step going out of the loop. No, going in. Going in. Yeah. And we okay. I'm just think environmentally uh standards or whatever i'm sure they've looked at that oh my God. i mean to be certified for issues in the future if we have a contractor who is with this company or is familiar with this company i guess and i'm going to say this a little bit you know as it is if council's uncomfortable with this project, we can walk away now. And no, I mean, it needs to be done because we need to know what's going in there. Yep. But I just have a hard time at ninety-three thousand dollars. It's no different than the hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars to scrape the dirt over at the skate park. It's no different. I mean, I at one hundred and twenty-four. What? I could I could make those those calls while I was on the phone with both you and the, the contractor as well because that didn't seem reasonable to me, Your Worship. I have zero idea what's involved in building something like this. But we'll get a report from Urban Systems, so we, we have some yeah, idea. We have it already. There's a detailed quote involved in in getting us there, but whether or not that's fair numbers for the work being done, I I don't know. I'd like I have to make a copy of that. Because I know quite a few plumbers. I know a very, very good plumber that's retired and could probably tell me who to get. Didn't we just finish saying we wanted three quotes for the museum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I say, two councils over, that's in the purchasing policy. But when I spoke to Urban Systems, and I said, who can do that for us? It was these guys. These absolutely. The Apple, absolutely. They're the, the go-to name in engineering in this place. Yes. But, you know, it, it, seems, friend, it seems different. It seems odd to me it's that you're cool. paying $8,000 for a valve and 80 something thousand for someone to put it in. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> on the recommendation of one. On the recommendation yes. of the supplier. Okay. I'm sorry, Chris, but well, I want to have. Because these are the decisions you're here to make. So you know. if that doesn't sit well with you, then direct me to go out and get tenders on this. And well, the, the plumber that. that I'm talking about built <laughs> Curtis York's building. He redesigned uh, some of those codes mm -hmm. for the gas fitting. So, like, this, this isn't a stupid man. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely have him look at the report on his recommendations and say, no, Lorraine, I think you should stick to urban systems. This is why. Yeah. Or, no, you could do that cheaper. You know, it's on the surface we have a, a grant to cover this cost. So what does it matter to us? But I think we have to be responsible with the, the money, whether it's you know saying we don't need it all, but this is what we do need. Okay. I think that's a responsible thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So then if you guys are okay with the project concept then if you approve this line through the list, I can still purchase the meter. And mm -hmm. then we can we can look yeah, at yeah we still want the project to go through okay, oh, yeah. opinions whether or not we, uh, we go with this this price or not yeah. okay I make that motion I agree okay okay you guys can someone can make a motion that this be that's a great motion this <laughs> <laughs> can be or I'll make the motion that uh, council approves this. Agenda, uh, this this capital and special projects list with the stipulation with the stipulation that anything that has to be done within the village we need three quotes. And can I get a second row now? I'll second. All in favor? Raise that hand. Okay. One down. One down. <laughs> this is easy. This one gets fun anyway, say. <laughs> Ken, number two recommendation. Do you want me to uh, make that motion? Yeah. That the council receive the budget for general government environment, health, public health and welfare and recreation for discussion. I'll second. And discussion. My turn again? <laughs> Just a wordy pass. <laughs> there we go. So I put the uh, PowerPoint on your wickets this time, you guys, but of course it's, it's up on, uh, on here as well. Um, so this is operating budget number one and i'll be bringing this thing back to you guys a second time similar to what we just did with the capital and special projects but tonight we're going to be talking about general government which includes the administration finance and general town hall operations uh environmental health which really means our garbage and recycling program public health and welfare which is animal control by law and cemetery and then the recreation which is Poos park uh museums library and uh, other celebrations Taking it off with the good news portion of it. Uh, in 2018, now that most of the costs have come in for the year, uh, our 2018 budget for those four departments was 754,000. Uh, we finished the year so far at 684. We still have a few invoices coming in from from various uh, various sources, so those are unaudited numbers. But we're $69,383 under budget here. Good so job, Chris and Sandy. Thank you. I said he saved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not where the good news ends either. So um, of those four categories, general government, environment, finance, public health, and recreation, um, all together, we're seeing uh, total category budgets of 111,000 and total actuals of, or sorry, 1.1 million, I should say, and here is about a million. So there's a difference among all four categories of about $99,000 in total savings across the categories. So that means for the budget for three years. Three years in a row, we save money. And that, uh, but we're not stopping there. Um, so the forecast 
is for 2019, uh, just in the general government. We've prepared a budget that's $41,000 below what it was in 2019. And the cumulative savings uh, in just that category since 2016, as an example, we've lowered the budget $142,000 in just admin since 2017. So, um, as you guys have alluded to, congrats are in order. So if these kind of results don't happen with a really focused team effort, folks, um, so congrats to council and definitely congrats to uh, staff too. Um, these were amazing results considering how busy this year was um, and last year as well. So the Carolina General Government, like I mentioned, we're looking at a $41,000 uh, budget increase in that category for 2019. How we got there is reductions in the legal budget. Obviously the election costs not on the table anymore. We won't see that for another four years because everybody's staying for the four years. <laughs> well, if I win 66 million, I'm sorry, I can't guarantee that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Understandable, Your Worship. Uh, so if we've seen some uh, a decrease in the post office maintenance budget because historically we haven't been spending the 18000 that was in there on, on post office maintenance. And then I've also reduced the admin and staff uh, travel expense budget. Not everything is down, of course, so there are some areas where we've seen increases, uh, council expenses being one of them. I'll go through those in more detail in a minute. Uh, we've had to increase the computer costs because, well, frankly, that stuff's getting more expensive. Uh, general government wages we're seeing, and you guys will see in the actual numbers as well. We budgeted about seven or 275,000 for general government wages. We hit 296, I think, were the numbers. Uh, we went back and looked at it, and that increase is largely a result of the overtime as a result of the community events and, and the stuff that we're doing on the side. So right, that there's is, nothing we can do because we can't get volunteers. No, and that's it, Your Worship. So I've increased that budget accordingly, but just so that you know, we're seeing, we're seeing you know, the, the hours that the staff are putting in for those extra, extra things um, start to, to show in the GS. So, I mean, having that lady run the July 1st, would have, that would have been the same price as that. It, potentially, time. yeah, potentially. I did make a note here, and it's in a subsequent slide as well. We've seen roughly a three-fold increase in community events just when I, just since I've started. So when I landed here, you know, we were doing the Canada Day and the truck light parade, and those were basically the two things that staff were called on to do evenings and weekends. Now we're seeing Canada Day again, the Santa Claus Parade, the Jamboree, the Spring Flame, the PRLGA meetings, the Council Tea event, additional council meetings for various things, um, weekend presentations to the fire hall where Alistair's coming in and doing photos and stuff. He's getting overtime for those. That's mm -hmm. not pro bono work on his part. Um, the Poops Park opening celebration. So I do make reference to it in a further slide, but I'll, I'll mention it. This year we don't out. have the PRLGA. <laughs> no. In it's going to be in Fort St. John. I have the invitation. Is it Fort St. John? Yeah. Well, I do remember. But what, what I'd like to highlight with that council is, in, in my opinion, as the, the staff's manager for the village, this is the limit that I'm prepared to ask staff to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, well, so. we're not going to have a council tea. You know? <laughs> we've, we've already had that. Yeah. What's Spring Flame? Yeah. That was our barbecue? Yeah. So that was the birthday. So are we still going to have a barbecue in the spring? Because we've got the jamboree. Sam. So last year, you guys asked us to put together a volunteer dinner tea. We didn't get to do it. Oh, okay. We have swag for it. Yeah. Um, and Councillor Smith had asked that it be moved to this year. So we're, I don't know if you guys still want to do it or not. We even did you uh, thank you to our volunteers, people? like our fire department. We had sent out invitations last year, but we ended up having to cancel it because we only had three people respond or something. It was a bad time. Yeah, the volunteer banquet never got okay. off and So spring would be better? Yeah, at that time of year that we had it, <laughs> when we finally got it done, I think it was through well, the summer, was it? It was August, and August. we were going to try and push it to September, but with UBCM, yeah. it just didn't work. So okay. people are busy, so don't it. get it done by the end of May, they're too... And then the spring fling, you guys had asked if we could the do a yearly thing in conjunction with the museum garage sale. Yeah. 
so we didn't do it last year, but do you want to do it this year? And if that's the case, then we have to start planning because yeah, that's I'm in May. Thinking, I'm thinking we should. <sighs> you know, get us cooking hot dogs and, you know, it's, I, I'm over there setting up tables and stuff like that, and then we can get out and cook some hot dogs and hamburgers for people. You're going to be the chef, not me. <laughs> You're the cooker. I got off on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing to think of outside of the time that, that you know your staff are spending at these events is all the lead-in time to it too. Which is which is fine. That, that's we've been, what we've been working on this jamboree. We've got the better part of three months worth of meetings into this jamboree so far. It's a ton of organizational logistics and meetings. Yeah, but you know what? If it takes off as a hit, if it's a hit. If it, it goes off of a hit, yeah. then yay. We, you guys can pat yourselves on the back, we can pat ourselves on the back. If it doesn't, then we've learned. From next year, we don't have a down here. Like, yeah. It's just bringing in something else to f have people here to enjoy our community. And, and we need to do those things. Yes. And in the past, it was three volunteers that did it. Um, and the the talent um, I want to say, for the jamboree, the note on it for weather cancellation. I like the way you guys worded it in the bottom. That if the weather gets too cold or too warm, yeah. events could be canceled because we're going to get those people. Well, you're going to say something. Yeah. And it's usually not residents. It's usually people. But that's good. They're they're coming. I see that somebody's asked if there was going to be a talent show. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I see that. Like really? I do know I miss having to organize that out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that much. We just too much. So graphically speaking, it speaks for itself. Um, kind of down on the sloping curve. Um, yeah, uh, more to say than, than that really. Getting into the actual numbers, I split this into two PowerPoint slides, so what you guys will see on page uh, nine. Yeah. Um, it's not quite the exact same split that you're seeing on the uh, on the agenda package, but this is essentially line by line. Uh, I've included the unaudited actuals line in there, as well as the budget for 2019 and then projected forward. These numbers here, for the most part, are really just projected forward at a 2% inflationary increase. That doesn't actually happen in every category, but it's it sounds like we practice it. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, more than happy to go over it with you line by line, but the ones that I highlighted on the previous slide were the council expenses, and that line is for some of the donations. It was uh, me and Kenny that asked me to increase that line because we're already seeing some applications from some of the groups in Dawson that have been denied funding through them. So, uh, you know, um, totally at council's discretion, of course. Um, council meetings and community. Well, for example, the um, Rotary, what are, no, not Rotary, what do they call the play the music? Kiwanis Band. Kiwanis Band. We have a letter from them that came today. Yes, because they, Dawson, will give them a grant of $7,100. So I messaged the girl on on uh, Facebook there, and I said, you know, you should maybe give a letter to Poos, and council will discuss it, because the Kiwanis come here and play in the band. And we pay them in the group. Yeah, but I, and I'm still saying, like, and, and Mary and Everett are Poos could be residents, she thought it was a conflict of interest to even ask me because they lived here in Poos. I mean, but they live in Dawson and they can ask Dawson. Yeah, but she just. So I said, just give us a letter and, and approach Poos. Because it's really not fair. They've been around forever. And they have participated in this village to mm -hmm. its extent. Anytime we reach out to them, they come. So I, I, that's why it's up there. And then also South Peace Horticultural Society was cut back. And we got the Art Council on next or tomorrow. And the Art that. Council was cut back. So that kind of begs the question then is is and that there, is that number so enough? Are you guys comfortable with it? Should we look at 
Which line is it, sorry? That was uh, this one, council expenses. Six thousand dollars. It's not gonna. No, it's it was six thousand in the twenty eighteen budget. Because the school alone, the school alone is ten grand for us to put our logo back up on the gym. Good. I can use that. So you're over already. You want. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to cost us ten thousand. It cost us five last year, year, and the rest are are uh, uh, five. The one is asking only sixty one. But so they actually, they, they're money. not okay. giving a number. That's just what they lost. Been, they Last lost. year we only paid five. And five, what do you mean? Five for what? To put our logo on the gym for the kid, the students? Remember we had our pictures taken and gave them a big check out here? Yeah, from South Peaks, yeah. That's the same I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Because they're 10 grand. Okay, okay. I thought you were talking about the logo on the school, our community center yeah, no. in Canada, I was going to say $10,000. As Sandy was mentioning something too, folks, that you know we're seeing those organizations come back to us now, that their funding has been declined with requests equal to what they were receiving from the city of Dawson Creek. Something you guys have to wrestle with is when, you know, where they're, when they're in front they of is it reasonable that the village of Boos picks up the no, entire tag from that organization? But I'm order. saying, you know, like the regional district, they say if you come to us for $5,000, we'll give you 25% of what you ask. Mm -hmm. And I think we should maybe implement that too. Oh, no, I wouldn't it, say depends, it depends on the organization. And I would say if we put that out there, that that strawberry, we're, we're, we're going to see. Oh, we're looking for five. So oh, the policy is twenty-five. We'll just increase this to twenty. We need to five anyway. <laughs> but that's going to be yeah. Pass, right? yeah. I think internally that might be an okay thing that, that you know. But I don't know if we, we put no, that no, line in the sand there. there. <laughs> There's no way we can give to every no everyone. So you know what I mean. But the Qantas is important. What I'm saying, yeah. But there'll be others that will be just yeah. as important. We're gonna have to set a limit on how many. If they're all coming, I I don't. Well, that, those are just I. Those are the few that I think are important. Um, the historical society is is important because it it um, has history there, and to cut back on on uh, the wages they did, they hired a person to catalog uh, forty two boxes of um, indigenous people's stuff, and then they went and cut back the wages on that person, so they don't have that catalog person anymore. Yeah, we can't like. Cover. No, we can't cover that. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. get help them with donations and stuff. So what we could look at doing, Your Worship, and I helped do this in my time at the District of Tumble Ridge, is put together a policy and an application document that puts some of this stuff on paper. And I want to see where else they're getting funding. Correct. Yeah. Not only that, I know Council's often spoken to, you know, a number of Poos residents that are, that are part of an organization and considering a grant application, so we should put that in there. And I literally called Tumblr and asked them to borrow the, the paperwork yeah. there and, and you know tailor it to our uh, to our needs here. But something I have seen a lot of times in the past with not-for-profit societies is not-for-profit societies that have extremely large reserve balances. Yeah. No. Um, and it, it, you know, and that was part of that process that we were doing there, where some of that stuff came to our attention. And we said, well, wait a sec, we need group that's asking for 10000 to report to us whether or not they actually need this money. And we also want to hear back from these people too. Right? Yeah, and that was part of it as well, that if the group didn't turn around and report what they'd done with the villages or you know the district's funds at year end, then that pretty much disqualified them for a grant because it's important that they report back to you guys. If we're, if we're allocating taxpayer dollars to these groups, what do they do with the taxpayer dollars throughout the year? So. Tim? I would recommend against having because they would lock into something. I would prefer, I and mean, it might be semantics, but I would prefer the term of guidance. Application. Something that we're not tied to, that we have Policy to Policy that gives us guidance. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and you certainly wouldn't be, Council Grover. There's, in, in a donation yeah, like that, that it's, it's a majority vote of Council. So because somebody put an application in, it doesn't guarantee them the funding in any way, shape, or form. It's, this is a discretionary account for you guys, and three out of five, Awards a donation to uh, to that organization, so 
if like for any parts. reason council, you know, you guys get a, an application from a group and collectively you decide, yeah, there's not enough post connection to, to really make this work for us for our taxpayer dollars, then, you know, the vote and, and there we go. I'm so worried that we'll take that money because everybody will be coming here because their bar budget starts in May and there'll be groups in POOS after the fact that will be wanting some donation and we won't have any money left in our budget. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, Remembrance Day service at the Legion. I think we should donate to that because if they're doing we'll it do for the village. That That's already done. Yeah, but or you know what I mean? The art class coming out here to do <coughs> art classes. Um, different things that are coming up. Maybe the community church might have something they're going to do. I just we don't want to give it then? all to Dawson Creek's reject mm -hmm. well, we budgets. No, but we've got to think of ours. We said that whoever comes to us, that we would make the uh, we would make the decision on whether we would give them something or not. Yeah. And I'm assuming that we would have poos at the top of the list. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like any, any kids, I, that's important to have sports and arts and things like that for kids. It's, it's important. And the Qantas Art Center, is, or Qantas Band, has been around forever. So if we can't give them a donation, then uh, there's issues. Well, all right, that, I, that, that's, you know, that can be said of all of the organizations that PUS residents participate in. There's, there's certainly a limit to what we can do without a doubt. And I think knowing the financial statements of the organizations making the applications is important too. Because mm -hmm. like I say, I've literally seen applications for not-for-profit societies for $10,000 and when I've looked at their financials, there's $100,000 sitting in, in GICs. And when I asked the president of that group, where's all this money from? Oh, well, the last couple of years, we haven't used all your donations. So we just we did some smart investing. We, we've set it aside for a rainy day. Well, why are you asking me for 10000 Well, we've always got 10000 So we just asked for what we got last year. I'm sorry, tonight, your, your group clearly doesn't, you're not for profit society. What are you doing with those kind of, kind of balances? Just like a, a household. <laughs> that's set a budget. Let's stick with it. Twenty thousand. Yeah, but did you want to propose to increase? That? Yes, I wanted twenty-five. Okay. Motion to council upset. Twenty-five. Second. All in favor? Ah. <laughs> what? Do you have something to say? Yeah. Um. We're upping our budget to give money away because Dawson Creek is tightening, tightening their budget. I, I hesitate to up ours, I'm sorry, to get valid. all of them coming here. It's valid. Mm -hmm. it's valid, but there is two for sure, the Art Council and South Peace. And like Chris said, he's going to check into their... I know, but they've never come to us before. It's only because Dawson Creek... No, it's because I reached out to them. I reached out to the Kiwanis Art Band, or whatever they're called. I reached out to them. Because they do. Anytime we jump, they jump. They come out here. They get paid, but regardless, they still... We can also look, and Council's kind of indicated this in, in one of the other ones as well, with the... Who was it? forget what group, but something along the lines of a grant for community service. We know from the previous slide we're struggling to get volunteers for all of these events we're doing. It wouldn't be out of council's, you know, discretion, I guess, to say to a group, we're proposing offering you five thousand dollars. We need help. We need five of your people to show up on And on if they don't day. show up on the next year not and to give them then the, money. the following year that may be a disqualifying factor. Yeah, because we have a few people that are the corn spend that do it. I'm sure the basketball, the volleyball, oh, Josh would have all those guys out here. Yeah, and it'd be, you know, that'd be nice from a staff standpoint too, because, you know, in addition to the wages, a lot of us have our family members come out and do the volunteering and that kind of stuff. If, you know, if we could, we could get some of the community volunteers benefiting from the taxpayer dollars to show some love back to the community by volunteering for one or two of the events, that would be. 
Okay. <clears throat> Make sure you put that in the little form. Yeah. So financial. Yeah. Uh, moving down the line, yeah, that, that's the general government religious line I mentioned. We've, we've kind of talked about this one. The office insurance, you'll notice $4,000 budget, $11,000 actual. Because we switched insurance providers this year, I had to have all the properties appraised and it was several thousand dollars to get that done. So it made us why, why did you change providers? Uh, <coughs> better, your worship? better, we got better service. We better got better service. Providing. And there was something about, we were faced with a large increase and ended up with MIA and it wound up being cheaper, but up nonetheless, if I remember correctly. So. So I've upped that to, uh, to bring it closer to the actual. Uh, where else? Yeah, administration, contracting, GL, I've lowered that significantly. Uh, the base staff travel expense, we've knocked 5,000 off of there. There's that computer line that we're seeing. So our actuals last year came in about 46. So I've put it But you also need to 47. state, Chris, when the general government employee wages, you also need to say that you do how many jobs here? Uh, two, close to three. <laughs> okay. And Blair does how many? Two, close to three. <laughs> okay. So we've cut back. Yeah. And that's that's reflected in the overall savings. I mean, just just for me, the CAO CFO role. When it was me and Adam here, it was about 170, 180 thousand for the two of us. You know, so there's been forty thousand knocked off of that to, to you know that meeting, but. Yeah, advertising we've cut back as well. We were only at uh, 3,900 last year, so I put that a little closer to the actuals. Any questions on no. that sheet, folks? Uh, Simon, did you want your advertising a little higher? <clears throat> advertising is one of the major areas we've made savings in this budget. So we were spending the thousands and thousands of dollars prior to, to 2017. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was a year where that advertising budget was like $40,000. And we had $8,000 ads in magazines and stuff like that. And for what? It, it, you know, we would never recover that cost. So um, that's one of the major areas over that, that four year period that we've seen a lot of savings. Uh, so yeah, I've reduced the legal amount. We only came in at $9,800. Um, I still left it at $17,500. I'm going to keep an eye on that for the next couple of years. We should be able to save a few bucks on that going forward too. Um, and then the legislative bylaw, we took you know, a large amount of money over there. That was for a bylaw contractor. Blair is now the bylaw officer, but I did leave 5,000 for bylaw supplies. Uh, economic development, we've reduced it a little bit. Grant writer, we've reduced it. Our grant writer was 3,200 last year, so no need for 10,000 in there. Uh, elections is off the table, of course. And then the discretionary ones that you were talking about, Your Worship, all the way down here in minor capital. Really administratively, we've got two sort of discretionary accounts, if you will. Um, the admin miscellaneous costs, and then minor capital. Uh, Can we just put the administration office costs? So that one, Your Worship? Yeah. Get that. The miscellaneous ones out of there. Get minor capital out of there. No, minor capital's fine. Okay. Um, but where is this admin miscellaneous? miscellaneous? Can yeah. we just put that as admin office costs? Admin costs, yeah. Admin office costs, okay. <coughs> and really, that's what it is. That's where a lot of our stationery and stuff ends up, ends up yeah. going there. So. Um, you let Trina know that Mayor does not like miscellaneous. I'll want to break down of everything. That's the case. Okay. That change I'll have to make inside uh, Maze because it's COVID. So. Um, but yeah, so what that means is last year the total uh, total budget was 754. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, we spent 684, and this year's budget is 712. But we're not going to hit that. In all likelihood, no, because we keep compressing those accounts that we're, we're not using, so we're getting closer and closer. 
it's we're never going to hit a point where the budget and this number is ideal. We always need a little bit of an operating buffer there for stuff that, that comes up. So something like the legal GL, for example, if I if I close that right down to five thousand dollars, and all of a sudden we get hit with a lawsuit for some reason, and then it's got to go to legal. You know, we can go through that in two weeks of working with the lawyers What's on something. What's public relation? Up towards the budget. Right there. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on what's in that right now. <coughs> but we don't pay the CJC now. And we have the Austin here for free. I believe that's that. Oh, I know what that is. Public relations is where we put our community surveys, the, the cost to do our mail drops, and our community consultation items. Okay, uh, moving on, environmental health. Um, oh, sorry, that page 81. Yeah, okay, that's the, just weird. Um, that's, so that's the garbage and the recycling collection. Uh, forecasted increase in this category of $1,000 for 2019. And that is almost entirely due to uh, increases in the garbage truck repairs and maintenance, and you'll see that in a second. Um, in this garbage truck. So the budget, and we were actually over budget in this in 2019 for exactly that reason. And the reason being, when Blair came in and took over that department, he immediately, you know, he's a former transportation guy, so he immediately started working or looking at our equipment and literally found like $8,000 of stuff on the garbage truck that had just been let go and wasn't being done. And seals and brakes and tires. And, so he came to me and said, I've identified all this stuff. What do you want me to do with it? I said, you're a transportation guy. I trust your judgment on this. Get, fixed. Get this truck to, to work. My garbage truck with wrecked his tires on it in 2015. No, who would do so. Well, the first one burned up. <laughs> yeah, the first one burned up. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, folks, it's not, I mean, it's $2,000 on an overall municipal budget of $2.5 million. It's, it's not going to gonna blow the doors off of the total budget, but I don't like seeing stuff that's over budget, but if it does happen, at least it's a justifiable reason, like we, we fixed up a piece of equipment that had been neglected for a while, is a good reason to see it happen. So. Um, still seeing similar trend in there though. Uh, environmental health budget was 59,000 in 2016, and we're at 48 here this year, including that small increase from from last year. Oh, I just love saving money. The graph's heading in the right direction. You don't want your stocks going in that direction. You don't want budget going in that direction. <laughs> uh, so looking at it in detail. It's pretty self-explanatory, other than, like I say, where the, the two cost increases come in. We had $1,000, and we split the, the truck repairs up between garbage and recycling. It's pretty much, it's the same truck, so we kind of just pick a GL depending on, on what's in there. But you can see what we budgeted and what we ended up spending. So we were $7,000 plus over, over budgeting that. So I've increased it to 2500 knowing that those repairs have been made, but the truck is getting old. It's you know, it's going through seals and years stuff it? like that. Uh, I won't say for sure. We bought that for. We bought it used. I know that for sure. Yeah. Uh, and we bought it used with some kilometers. Some. Or the sum on it. Some on it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything uh, you guys want to no. dive into a little bit deeper there? No. Pretty straightforward. Um, public health and social welfare, aka animal control and bylaw, uh, forecast a decrease in this category of uh, $8,300, mostly due to the bylaw role being combined with the fire chief and then a decrease in the animal control officer's supplies as well. Um, and the actuals were way under that category as well. So uh, we budgeted 48,000 in 2018, and we spent 31,600. Oh, it's so I'm so glad we think alike. So, I'm, just, uh, I'm so glad. And that's that's the steepest rolling graph that we've got. Uh, Don, you gonna make a donation to step up and ride? No, no, 
that she held us uh, hostage. Um, hostage on July 1st. Okay. So she got in on them. Animal control. Yeah. Um, I have some questions. Okay. Uh, we don't have any shelter in place for any animals. Uh, no. SPCA, have they got back to us on? Unfortunately not. So Wendy has been in communication with me, I believe three times, and all three of those emails have been, I'm working on it, I'm busy, I'm still talking to the board, I'll get you the numbers as soon as I can. And I'm, so I'm waiting on numbers, I was hoping to present those to council for this meeting on where we were with our $5,000 CAT program donation. How many people have used it? What's remaining in that sinking fund? I have no idea right now. And then the ask was to see what the board wanted as a contribution from the village to have a dedicated kennel at the new SPCA building. Um, no answer on that. How does she expect us, if she doesn't give us any numbers, this is budget time, she knows that. It's, it's frustrating. And really, if we were going to look at doing that too, that should have been in the capital and special, uh, special yeah. project budget. Is, is less comfortable the way the status quo? It's it's working okay. Um, you know, mostly well, because... Well, you still got the three cats. I mean, mm -hmm. so SPCA won't even talk to them and get the cats. Was, I mean, he's had three yeah. three kittens since yeah. before Christmas? Since the week of Christmas, I believe, mm -hmm. is when he got those three cats. And that was part of the original email to, to Wendy that, hey, my animal control officer picked these cats up. He says he's tried multiple times to get them in and get them spayed and neutered under the cat control program. What's happening with that? And then, by the way, he's keeping them in his backyard. I hope you write something in the newspaper about this. Can we find, uh, can we find a spot well, there to house them at the SPCA and... And all it takes is a quick email back saying, you know what I mean? Well, and, and admittedly, like I said, she has responded. Just the emails have been more of a deflection that I'm working on it. I'll get you the numbers as soon as I can, and there's been, been no follow-up. Well, they have opened up that meeting, so um, SPCA. So they're still. trying to get that organized. And yeah, I imagine she's busy. And even the cat control thing, I understand it's come to a screeching halt because the vet, the, the agreement, the, the original retired. agreement was yeah. with is no longer in business. So Never retired. It, yeah, I think she's she's in a tough spot right now trying to coordinate that and make that all work. So I'm, I'm not trying to throw her under the bus by any means, and, you know. But it would be nice for us to have that information and be able to make some decisions here. So. Yeah. But outside of that, um, yeah. Uh, small budget decrease there as well in terms of the, the category. Like I say, we've moved these into into uh, wages as opposed to contractor. And really, that's about it. Les is doing a good job to manage his, his contract within the budget, and he's definitely not spending a ton of money on, on supplies. So uh, part of that 533 bucks was actually food for those cats over the last couple of months, because he, he came and talked to me. And, Jesus, what are you doing with well, well, Housing them and, and feeding them, and he just says, them. you know, would you guys be willing to cover the food for that? So, of course. So, you know, that's coming into that a little bit of animal control supplies. But uh, because he's done he's done well there, I not a thousand bucks. He's done well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I got to say, I'm, I'm very happy with the services. You know, the reports are coming in. He's meeting the contractual obligations that he, he said he was going to do. 110 percent. So I'm glad he's on our team. Yeah. Every and week. residents get the attention when they need it. Yeah, yeah they get one on one. And I've kept every single one of his animal control reports. I've got a file in, in my office and there's a notable difference between the first few months that he was doing that. You know, it was ten dogs and cats and stuffed animals that are running wild all over town and now it's three or four and a lot of the a lot and of the reports the are coming back saying, I'm doing regular patrols and I'm driving around trying to find something to pick up. Yeah. But, but people know same. that he's out there. Yeah, but there's also the same dogs that keep getting out because yeah. they don't want to fix their fence or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's often reports there where it says I picked this dog up for the third time or the fourth time. So, but, but when, once it starts costing them, they generally fix the fence. You would think. Yeah. And I, he asked me a moment ago if it was working. His, and I asked him about that too. His comments were that it's working now only because when he captures an animal, it's usually picked up the same day. 
So the need to house them overnight is, is pretty minimal. Um, but that's not to say that you know, we're <coughs> providing that service. We should have you know a code compliant place to, to shelter the animals or you know do something to see it awesome. But but if if SPCA isn't getting back to us to be able to, to have a kennel, how are we supposed to do? That? Yeah. We're kind of in a rock and a hard place. So and it, it becomes as long as the residents know that that SPCA are not stepping forward and giving us a price to actually rent it. And it is budget time. Yeah. Yeah. And outside of those emails to your worship, that's not the first time we've asked. I mean, no, I know. When he's been here to do presentations before, and that question's come directly from council, what do you guys want to give us a, a kennel? Um, yeah. She's never got a request on it. What does uh, Tumblr do for their efforts? There's no of that there. Uh, Good question, Councilor Drover. I don't remember, but I'm leaning towards there might be some type of animal shelter at the public works yard, but yeah, yeah, just don't quote me on that though. But they, they do it in house too. They definitely don't have a relationship with the SPCA just because of the distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one, but it's not fit. It's not. It's just an old pound of a wooden floor. Well, it's, we don't need the help to it's only for the dogs. Yeah, so no, I guess it's it's if they get part of the SPCS standards. Yeah. It's not uh, up to code for animal. If an animal gets part of then you can't clean it up. And then every animal will get part. Yeah, the stall, because it's in an ADCO trailer, they can't be washed down, like pressure washed or anything. And should be stained. There's something about the heat, and I believe there's a running water issue in there because the animal has to have access to fresh water. And it, that's, that's a function of the world we live in, right? It, it, there is a set of standards now for a dog kennel. <laughs> You know, so the owner can keep the dog in a plywood and, and Canadian tire tarp in their backyard, but when we catch it, it's got to be in a fully compliant right. shelter. Because <laughs> <laughs> the dog will bite you. It's a risk. It's a risk. Yeah, sign of the times we live in. Uh, moving on to recreation. Uh, increase in this budget, 14100 for 2019. Okay. Ask oh, yeah, go ahead. For the municipal emergency program, how come it's only 500? What's, what's that entail? Um, nothing. We haven't actually used it, um, but it's there in case we need to do any kind of emergency planning or activating the emergency operations center for a day due to a fire or something like and that. And we only have $500 in there? Yeah. Um, most of the other yeah. stuff, <laughs> most of the other stuff that we'd be putting in there in, in the case of a small fire or already be so this is this is to just do some basic because you know that if something in here it happens here we take it on mm -hmm. regional district will help us but the town is responsible okay. the, help. the ministry will go oh, it's so sad. Mm -hmm. depends on if we get one of those PIP numbers if we yeah. engage under yes. the PIP number then yeah. it's then it's recoverable by the no, ministry no 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 Regional district did that, and, and some of the they directors can be, didn't don't get their money back. No. Yeah, they can be really they can be really. I worked uh, I was an emergency uh, ESS for a lot of years, yeah. and I went to all of their different courses and stuff like that. And I wrote the original emergency program for the village. Okay. So they they will only cover a certain amount, but there's all these different stipulations on top of what they will do. 2004 was rewrote. There's, the legislation was rewrote in mm -hmm. 2004. Okay. So I know our emergency, our actual emergency plan hasn't been updated in a number of years either, but. Yeah, they recommended that at the regional district that we do do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, ours isn't old. I think it's 15 or 16, so it's not like it's it's not like our traffic yeah, control file yeah, is from what it is. We need to update it. It's still the one that I wrote. <laughs> um, so do you guys want to see maybe an increase there as a precaution? Because as, as we can see, you know, last year there wasn't, you know, and we might anymore. not ever use it, but if, if we need it. Yeah. Well, if you need it, you take it from where it's available. And bring it to council and say, hey, yeah. Yeah. just pull a trunk. Declare an emergency. Declare an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> we build a wall around booths. Take, take the wing just away from the employees because we have an emergency. Yeah, I need a wall. 
We're going to build a dog kennel. Yeah. It's going to be the best dog kennel you've ever seen. He said he'll work for free. Work for us. Do we want to leave it as is, folks, or switch that? I would put this in 1,500. Yeah. Okay, uh, motion on that. Because it's something that you don't want to no, ever have to use, but if you have to. Mm -hmm. Can I have a I second it. All in favor? In favor. Where did that go? Good catch, folks. Yeah, well, we've been there, done that one. Mm -hmm. Page 7 for your chairs, click 100. Like I said, I've taken all of them. So you can actually take step up and ride out of there, right? Like. It doesn't need to be a function anymore, so that yeah. line can actually close up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pull that out of the And you might as well put Chanel. <laughs> She's on the other step up to the plate. So back into recreation. Oh, uh, yeah. Increase there. Most of it is due to increase Canada Day costs and additional operating funds requested by the museum. I did put a copy of the museum's budget on everybody's wicket there, too. There's no glaring line item that's like, oh, wow, it's this one, one item that's increasing. They're, you know, they're doing incremental increases to a lot of the, uh, a lot of the GLs. Um, and then in our case, of course, uh, you know, Canada Day is, is starting to have an effect on the municipality. We're budgeting 45000 for it this year. What's their wage overhead, Chris? Sorry? It says wage overhead. What is that? I, I believe that's just their wages line over. Because they got employee number three, wage overhead. Oh, sorry, oh, that, that may be their benefits. Oh, yeah. Does that that's, has benefits? I would assume that's sort of the statutory. Can you check the for thing? me, please? So, it, it, yeah, you told them what that adds to 50000 Um, But the estimate on the other side. Yeah. Fundraising, uh, fundraising, fundraising supplies, like they do fundraising, $200. Is that for like when they do their pancake breakfast and stuff like that? Do they need to, is that what they're talking about? Well, fundraising supplies, like fundraising is, is when they have they that annual. They got nothing there. there. I know. Oh, but when they do that to. annual. Um, their pancake breakfast? Yeah, yeah. and they're. Like, their tea, where do they put that stuff? Oh. tea, like two hundred dollars advertising promotion. They must get a lot of it for free. Well, we <laughs> we do a lot of the advertising and promotion for them. I mean, most of our advertising GL is. is but fundraising supply, I like I, I, I'm just really questioning that. Like, they have a tea. They get everything donated. Is that People the make cost scones. Of, is it the cost of buying the Tim Hortons or? It, the, the unfortunate part about this, folks, is it's not my budget. So I think if you guys want detailed answers about what's actually in there, it'd be best to invite the museum in to be so. Yeah. Don't they come? Should they not come with their budget, the library and, and the museum? Unless council requests it. I mean, I, I reviewed it and it seemed reasonable to me. But if you guys want to know more details, um, definitely we can invite them in. And, Less you should have increased your budget. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I'm raising supplies. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the library's one and it's the same. Yeah, okay. I think it's actually that's good to know. Stuff. Thanks. Uh, I put yeah. it in as I put it in as the same, but I just don't I work the same time as you do, so it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is it. Do you guys want the uh, a delegation okay. from the library yeah. to come in? Yes, please. Yeah. I, I think so. Okay, so um, because there's questions here that uh, it's not down how much they earn with all these fundraisers, or or well, they don't they don't have anything for fundraisers. <coughs> well, oh, but, that's but we know this is, this is just the expenses that we don't have. Like we the income is here. Budget. It's our budget that this six thousand dollars revenue from Village of Kuskoopi for previous years. Um, Government of Canada employees three total grants one and five total revenue from fundraising. Yeah. 
So I mean, they have to have supplies to be able to have the fundraising, right? Yeah, but doesn't say that where does it say what they make for the fundraising? Right. Funds um, received from government of Canada. That's blank too. Yeah. I'm but sure. that, isn't that the pay? I they think get, don't they get a, a, a grant? Yeah. A student, student grant or whatever it is. That's but it says Government of Canada Employee 3, $5,000. That's not a guaranteed thing, though. So. Yeah. No. But then they got, up here they got Employee 3, $9,500. So one is the, that's the income statement you guys are reading. Is yeah, one is income, one is expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Expenses and everything. So it's definitely rather than speculating on it, guys. Let's let's get them in. Yeah, know, we'll get them to have a conversation with us about where those numbers come from. And, uh, because I think that some of those places should have one. But anyway, mm -hmm. so the uh, you, you know the uh, I think Les has been doing an extraordinary job there. Oh, oh and yeah, and for what he gets paid, mm -hmm. nothing, isn't it? That's nothing. We and maybe he done. just, this is not his, you know, forte, so maybe this, he needs some help. This isn't his budget, Councilor Smith. No. It's the, it's the treasurer of the museum and the board's budget. Yeah. Okay. He came and dropped it off to me. But, uh, oh, no, sorry, Joe, uh, Joe Trombley did, I should say. Yeah. Which is, does, which is less his brother-in-law. Hmm? Huh? Mm -hmm. Is less campaign? Yeah. Is he yeah. employee number one? He's, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, right. so we'll, we'll invite them in. Uh, He's over here shoveling in for a meeting mm -hmm. really quick, which is Public Works Department. Well, keeps him busy. I know, keeps him busy, but still. So, continuing on uh, recreation, yeah, I mentioned the library budget wasn't in yet, but. Uh, I got it, it's the same as last Yeah, Councillor Weiss brought that in, so that's good. Uh, increase in the museum budget of 11,500. We're just talking about that. Uh, increase in Canada Day amount by 5,000. Um, and then I mentioned here too that we're looking at lots of community events taking place right now. Uh, on the actual versus budget side, um, we're under budget in that category uh, relative to or for 2008. Actual is a 244, budget a 260, so down 16,000 bucks for this year as well. But it's one of the categories that, despite being under budget, we're seeing a pretty clear trend where it's starting to move to the upside almost entirely due to the extra events and functions that we're putting on. So um, as long as council's still okay with all of that stuff, that's uh, that is, is there a stipulation for the coordinator how much he has to um, participate to make wages? In recreation. He's got a contract with us. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what he does. No, 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 no. The, uh, the contract stipulates two or three recreation programs a month. Uh, I have to, I could bring it back to council. You guys could, uh, could take a look at that document. Yeah. yeah. Having been involved with recreation for yeah. a lot of years. Yeah. From what I've seen, you know, that, that Al's doing for us, I can say he's definitely not taking home 100 bucks an hour out of that, that contract. Not even <laughs> Probably less than a fifth of that. But, um, I haven't been able to get a hold of them. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I can I can bring that. Actually, probably best if I email that to you guys because it is a contract. So I'll email it to you. If you okay. Have any questions. Okay. Um, looking at the recreation numbers directly. Uh, yeah, Poof Park. Um, we still got some dollars in there, so fifty one hundred for for this year. This increase, I wasn't able to charge that increase or a lot of it to the capital project because the different we were we were sitting at I think it was forty five hundred bucks give or take, and then we decided to do the grand opening ceremony, so income the bouncy castles and all of that good stuff, so that pushed us over the the five thousand dollar budget there. We should be able to stay in there. This is really just the minor you know, items at the park, the line room, bike, or something like that. Well, what do you do with the bike? I'll change some things. Um, yeah, I'll just change the bike. Things. Recreation coordinator, big difference there between the budget and the actuals, but Al only came on board in October, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, so that is what it is. I've taken out the benefit line because he's a contractor right now. So he's in charge of them, but yeah. Uh, can 
community center expenditures and left that a little bit because we need to buy some new dishes mm -hmm. and wine glasses for the community center. They're starting to get ratty and some of the wine glasses are breaking. So. Okay. What was that? Yeah, and the settings are, people, dishes got broke so you don't have yeah. a complete setting. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to stay within that budget, although Skyler found a nice set that if we bought it would be close to 4000 bucks. Ken, you're smiling. <laughs> I wonder what Sandy had to do with it. <laughs> no, that was actually uh, Skylar and Alistair that were working oh, on Oh, sorry. That. No, yes, I did. I told Skylar I wanted stainless wine glasses. Yeah, you did. <laughs> stainless wine right glasses? Oh, oh, right. those, are, those are so good. Well, well, they they just, was there now, and they break. That's breaking, Jen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ones with the stems are so brittle now. Yeah, like so those, clean cut of hand. Yeah. So well, those were the ones that night. Yeah. I think if we go with those, we're close to four thousand bucks. But we're renting the facility. Out. We've got a visitor experience there, and we keep them for a long time. So you know, yeah. The one thing that you guys may be wondering: we don't necessarily go in there and inventory every dish and wine glass after. Oh well, yeah, can't. There's there's I four hundred I think of, of some of those items. So. Well, that's included in the rental thing, anyways, yeah. isn't it? That's I mean, those better. pictures. Have been we set in the rental for, prices to make more sense now. Let's just say. The pictures were have been in there since the place opened. I think there's like three or four left. The plastic pictures. The picture there's none. That should now there's none. But those should have been um, discarded three years after. Okay. The so having place opened up because having said that, Your Worship, would you be okay if I switch that from three to let's say five or six, and we get some, well, some we new stuff to. in there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, you can buy a lot of paper plates for that. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're raising the rates, then we need to make sure that the people have good quality dishes. So when we're we raising it to five or six, five. Five? five. five. Yeah. Well, if you can get that stuff for four thousand, right? Okay. What's that? Those plates that are unbreakable. Corral. Corral. Oh, that's, 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 that's not true. That's not true. When they, they break, they, they shatter. They see my foot. My foot's <laughs> not in the I stand correct. <laughs> 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 you don't know the garbage. I have a question. Poos Park. I'm going to get married next week. I want to have my wedding down at Poos Park. How much is this going to cost me? I got asked this question. Yep. <laughs> so I, I'm just saying, there's no power down there. There's porta potties. There's garbage cans, and there'll probably be picnic benches down there in the spring. Mm -hmm. So should we phone the village office and say we would like to reserve it, or do we yes. just go down there on yes. our own and make no. plans? As no. it stands right now, we don't have any requirement to know about. If it is a big function, I have told people to contact the village and let the village know yeah. that that is taking place. But where is that? Like, that's common sense here in this room? No, I've told people. I've told people that. Yes, Sandy? We have no policy. No. Well, let's right, get a policy. So that's what we're trying to get at. Yeah. So let's get a policy. Or, or put it out on our Facebook page or our village thing that if we're going to do it policy is the the proper way to go okay to, yeah yes yeah, so well we need some direction some because somebody's so going to know yeah I've been, I've been asked quite a few times okay okay <coughs> so um, does it cost anything no. would it cost I, anything and now you guys when we bring the policy to you for the first couple of drafts could look at setting the cost if you wanted Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not getting married then. <laughs> oh, shut up. Me why? You want to dispense? Don't feel bad, Barb. I've decided I'm not doing it again either. <laughs> no, somebody asked me, how much does it cost to have a wedding gown in the parking lot? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, that's what it's there for. Um, we've lowered municipal parks and playgrounds only because we've got so many capital and special projects to do the benches and stuff. This is just our, our general recurring maintenance TL. Uh, beautification, we went up a little bit. Um, special events, Canada Day, like I say, we're sitting at 45. We spent 43 last year, so it's, it's slowly creeping up. Dollars. Yes, I know. It's, well, and that's that's a good. Thing. <coughs> but you yeah. had volunteers. No, we did. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yeah, I was out there yelling and directing traffic. <laughs> so yeah. 
I, if I graph that candidate AGL, it would go in completely the opposite direction from all the general budget GLs we're seeing right now. To your point, we're probably, we've probably seen a fourfold increase over the last 10 years. Give or take. But we're doing bouncy castles now and food vendors and all of this stuff, and it's a pretty awesome experience. But we've we got, got it branded. That's Poos's day, one a year, and we can't let that brand fall. Yeah, yeah. Every year we have to do it. Yes. And we're, we're getting close to the level where it's it's getting close to past staff's ability to, to organize it too. I mean, this is months and months and months of, of planning to go into it. Last year it was nine, two hour staff meetings just to, to you know, just to do the plan, line everybody up. Well, I think people. council should actually entertain hiring somebody next year when we actually put it down in Bruce Park to make it a grand opening. Start from scratch with the July 1st. It would take a huge, huge burden off our shoulders, Your Worship, because oh, I know. of course, you know, planning that stuff pulls us away from managing the other the other projects as well. Yeah. So, I used to buy the bean. The, 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 the spreadsheet that we have to do candidate just right now is, is three pages long in, in bullet point form stuff to take off and, and, and that's and we've literally put that together internally over the last couple of years it's, it's a big big undertaking so I did it the first year and yeah. then I handed the reins over to Sam yeah and the first I had year I informed everybody in four days I had that place yeah. planned yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that that's, uh, that's pretty good so and special events other we've up to 15 and that's just to include you know the stuff that looks like is on the horizon uh, donations are removed because that's in council's expenses GL for the other donations now. Um, and then the volunteer banquet one is still on there as its own special GL too. Volunteer one. I that's, wanted to have a thank you for the volunteers. We did it every year. I, it hadn't been done for a long time, so it's I thought. Big, so, so, do you guys want to pass this budget, please? So, so make a motion. motion. With the, okay. with the with the changes. changes. So we're in the in the tenth inning, the ninth inning stretcher. Hey, hey, um, hey, second. Morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her go. <laughs> she was about to start. Oh, I hope that turned out on the video. summary charts to go over real quick um, budgets speaking budgets not actuals here at this point by category general government and I'm using 2016 as a base year because that's the year where McKinney and I both came in and, and started uh, changing focusing on this stuff so 2016 we're 855 we're at 712 now uh, environmental health 2016 we were 59 we're at 48 now Public health in 2016 base year, we were 96.6, we're 40,500. Recreation 2016 base year, we were at 316, we're at 274.6 now. Total by year, 1.3 million in the 2016 base year. You gotta uh, get a under, of that up. under 1.1 <laughs> here Austin. this year. <laughs> Me and Chris have done it. <laughs> the, the important thing to highlight with the yeah. council is that all these budget decreases, we've actually increased the amount of stuff we're doing mm -hmm. while that's happening. So, mm -hmm. so we're doing mm -hmm. more for less. By far. And then looking at that just in a quick graph as well. So uh, pretty nice to see. I sleep okay at night. I do too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all, folks. That's, that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Do you have a ballpark idea on tax? Tax? Um, taxes? What, 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 increase? What? In terms of e increase? Yeah. Tax increases are def definitely up to you guys. I'm going to be recommending something similar to what we've done in previous years two or three bucks a month on, on average for the representative household. Yeah, and it doesn't affect. Um, uh, the seniors because they pay a hundred dollars worth of their taxes or they pay the yeah. Yeah. yeah 
Yeah. So yeah. last year the tax increase was right around three dollars per month, or thirty-six bucks a year for the average household. I think it's probably a prudent thing to do to, to do that again this year. But of course, you guys completely set the, the tax rates. We'll go through that live and, and see what the effect of it is. I, I, um, what really, really makes me mad is that we're taxed on the police. Yeah. Now they have their full functioning um, department, police department, but for the last couple of years it wasn't, and we've paid tax yeah. for policing yeah. for the last couple of years, and, and the police department has been down. That makes me mad. That also makes me mad when we have to pay for hospital tax when we have do not have an adequate hospital. Those are things that, that makes me mad. Yeah. Well said. And I also think that we should think about when we think about increasing taxes, especially when we think yearly. And there are people that are on limited budgets. And the government, our federal government, expects these people to save money for their retirement. <laughs> How? Like, are we going to be seeing future people living on the streets? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's and are we contributing to the nickel and dime people? And we're essentially in competition with those folks for the same disposable dollars from each household that the federal government's in. Mm -hmm. So every, I mean, people only have so much disposable exactly. income. So when we see the provincial and the federal governments increase carbon taxes and all of these other things, mm -hmm. eco fees and carbon taxes and tax rate, BC now has, if I'm not mistaken, it's the third highest income tax rate in, in North America or something mm -hmm. something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then, then we come out and we're trying to manage a municipality directly with the dollars that are out there. We're forced to put increases of three bucks a month into the household because we feel that that's what, that's all people have left that they can afford. In the last and five years, more, I've seen an increase, like majorly increase in the last five years. Yeah. But when was the last time um, senior uh, senior security was increased. It was. They, yes. It hasn't. And, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as last year. politicians, yeah. why aren't we bringing this I to our to federal? Pension. You guys are going to go DFCM? Can you? I make about $1,100 a month on my pension. Yeah. There's lots of things I've found. Except for CM. True. Are you resigning? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that we should really think Extremely careful about what we ask people. Yes. Oh, yes. And that's why, Councilor Hebert, when I bring those tax proposals back to you guys, I break it down into that easy, manageable number so that you know we can we can get a sense of what the, the taxpayers are actually going to pay out of their their pocket. Mm -hmm. I think when we go to UPCM, we need to ask for our policing money back and our hospital money back. Mm -hmm. We. That's fine. Yeah. You have something else? Mm -hmm. no. We did it last year at tax time. We did a look at about how many people collect 65 and over their taxes and whatever. It was we really meticulously looked at that that it would not increase for those people. But it's not just the same as I'm thinking. It's oh God, yeah. grandmother's dream, grandchildren. But most of those are in rental homes. I know, but I mean, grandmothers, they, they own their rental property. They have to increase their taxes. They just increase their rent. Can't. They force those people. They can't. They're only allowed to do it 3% every year. Right. But 3% so, sometimes. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's just go for 3%. Sometimes 3%. I don't know. I just think that the really should be. But, also, we have to look at, we can't be sustainable if we don't, it's not a big thing, like 2%, 3%, but we can't keep going, no tax increase, no tax increase, no tax increase. And we were doing that for a number of years, and that's what landed us in the situation. This is sure why we're in hot water now. Oh, I understand that. I mean, I'd rather cut a candidate than put somebody out in the streets. Oh. You know, that type of thing. You know, I, I, I agree with Marty. The, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I really think we have to think very hard as a council about raising taxes. I want to ask a, a question. 
what is our total budget expenditures for anticipated for 2019? Across everything? Yeah. Um, don't know off the top of my head, but last year was around 2.5 million. 2.5 million. Yeah. Of that 2.5 million, or okay, 2.5 million expenditures, how much do we receive in tax? About 340,000. Our, our staff wages doesn't even cover that. Our, our tax revenue doesn't cover our public works department for seven months. So, you know, this is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we need to pass up out of that. There were different passes. No, nope, we're good. You're yeah, that was just the first the, the first review there anyway. So I'll make those changes, bring it to you so guys me, for a second. Let time. me um, cancel this meeting. Or adjourn, 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 adjourn,